Hey, it's Josh here. I'm back with episode five, part two. Part two. Of Radiant Reflections. Uh, at the end of the last episode, we talked about doing a roundtable. So we actually, we just hung out longer. We went and got some five lakes. Now, the Radiant Reflections podcast is not officially sponsored by anybody, but we would just Yet. like to do like a huge shout out to Five Lakes Coffee. <laughs> Nitro Brew all the way. Uh, Sturgis, Our Michigan. unofficial sponsor to That's the right. podcast. We would just like to say that if you're looking for a good cup of coffee, head on over to yeah. Five Lakes. It's good stuff. So, hey, we wanted to continue to unpack, you know, in, in episode five, part one, we looked at this idea of the flesh dog and the spirit dog. Paul writes in Romans 7, he writes in Galatians 5 and elsewhere in his letters to the churches about this conflict between our sin nature and the life that God calls us to that is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the other features in a lot of those conversations that Paul had with the early churches was also this idea of law. So, in a sense, Paul brings a a third dog into the fight, and we wanted to just uh, unpack that a little bit. We didn't talk about that in the book, did we? We no. did not. This is like, we're just kind of, we're this learning and growing. Like and this. Riffing. Getting new stuff. We're riffing. Yeah. I like them. But <laughs> you said it like we have a book already. I did, yeah. Like it exists. Yeah, he, he said. And when I say we don't book, have it in the book. Like, it's a napkin. <laughs> it's a napkin in it's, my well, dresser. It's, it's multiple napkins, isn't it? It's so technically several napkins. you have so multiple it's in print. pages. It's, on a napkin. It's, it's, so sure. it's just, yeah. it's more of a book lit than a book. at this yeah, book lit. I don't know. Uh, hey, and we have a new person. We now. do. So we, we have uh, once again, uh, again, I'm Josh Harrow. We have Brandon Kinsey, Pastor Ryan Bibb, and Pastor Brandon. I didn't say Pastor. I'm sorry, Pastor. That's Brandon okay. Kinsey. I'm just a regular. And human. we have uh, Pastor Josh Brown with us for this episode as well. And we wanted to look a little bit at, in a sense, kind of a modern day law dog, and what that looks like. So, you know, if Paul is, is writing to people who come out of Judaism, right, they put a lot of stock in their tradition, right? And, and, and Paul is kind of saying, hey, like, we don't want to get too bound up in that. And so the last episode spawned this question, are there traditions that we have now yeah. that maybe get in the way of us living the life the Spirit calls us to? Or, yeah, again, I, quite frankly, like, we didn't, we haven't, like, Whiteboarded any of this, so we're just we're just kind of having a conversation. Totally going riffing. from the hip. Really, we're riffing. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're riffing. So, uh, so JB, I mean, since this is your your first episode yeah. on camera, right? Normally, JB is behind the camera. He's doing all the recording. He does make all it the sound audio. awesome. He's uh, he's a, a brilliant guy with all the tech stuff. Um, so I'll, we'll let you weigh in first on this. Like, I mean, give us a little bit of, and you were actually just talking like a few minutes before we started recording, give us a little bit of background on Paul and uh, this whole conflict with the law. What's, what's he getting at with all of that? Yeah, we know that, you know, Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin and he was uh, a Pharisee of Pharisees, right? So this was an elite group of church people uh, in the early church that, that followed the Torah, and even parts of unwritten laws that weren't even in the Bible. Um, And so what we see in every letter that Paul wrote, every single letter in the New Testament, Paul is dealing with the first century church, learning what it means to walk with Jesus, uh, not necessarily outside of the laws of God, but in conjunction. And and what do those laws mean? How, How do they impact us? I mean, the biggest gateway to Judaism all four guys who can say it, circumcision, right? That was the number one thing that, that God laid out in, in the first covenant. Um, and so Paul's just learning and, and teaching people how to walk with God in the midst of that conflict. Right, and again, because you had, you had people that were, they were Jewish, and then they became followers of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But then as, as other people were kind of joining this, this Jesus follower movement, they were saying, oh, well, hey, no, well, if you really want to follow Jesus, right. you have to be circumcised, which, again, for a Gentile, somebody who wasn't Jewish, this is like, you want me to do what? With what? Where? You know? I can't imagine some of those conversations <laughs> happening. I think I'm at the wrong church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Bonus advice here. If you ever show up at a church and they say, before you can become a member, yeah. 
Here's the knife. Uh, all the cops. All the men, please all rise and come on stage. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, thanks. Maybe run run quickly. Run very quickly <laughs> out the doors uh, <laughs> of that. So, yeah, so there's, so again, it's, it's not that the law was bad. Right. Right? It's, it's not that the law was, was some arbitrary thing, although some of it was, in a sense, extra biblical. Right? Yes. I mean, and, and it was based more on the traditions. And in fact, I can't think of it. Uh, maybe one of you guys can think of it. But there's a spot where Jesus is having a conversation with the Pharisees, and he talks about how they've basically, they're ignoring what God called them to in favor of their tradition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're letting their mm-hmm. traditions, right. yeah. you know, basically trump what God called them to. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, Jesus kind of, he... Yeah, the, the, story, the story in, in that context, these guys were saying, we can't be generous to God and keep the command to tithe because we have to put money aside to take care of our parents later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Jesus is saying, hey, <laughs> you know, my laws don't conflict with, the, with one another. They, they don't, one doesn't cancel out another. So you can be obedient to both uh, and bless God in the midst of that and not, not pick, essentially. Nice. So I wanted us to just take a few minutes here on this, this second part of the episode to look at maybe what are some modern day traditions. So I don't, and, and we each probably come from slightly different church backgrounds or, or lack of church backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we'll we'll get a kind of a diverse representation here. Um, maybe one of the terms that we sometimes use in church world is sacred cows. Right, this idea that there are things that people like they cling to so dearly, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with with what Jesus has called us to. It has nothing to do with with salvation or the gospel, but we we elevate it to that status. So so guys, what are some things that you've seen? Like if you look back over the the decades of your life and and within church world, whether as an insider or an outsider, what are some things that you would look at as kind of a, a tradition that you've seen people hang on to that isn't really at all biblical or not that it's necessarily like against the Bible, but it's there's no real guidance in Scripture to say, oh yes, well you have to blah 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 blah. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> no one's hopping first. <laughs> you got to tread water here. No, no. See, and, and, and I get it. So, so here's, here's, here's maybe one of the things, right? Because maybe some of you listening, we're about to step on your toes. Right? I mean, and, and we don't want to do this in a way right. that's disrespectful. No, we, and not we, in a will, malicious. we yeah. will step on your toes, but we do it in a loving way. That's not our heart. Right. We will step on toes. Yeah. We will, we, will, we will do that. But our heart is not that. Our heart is not to condemn you. Uh, the heart is, hey, we, we may have even, the, the four of us may have even been tripped up by these traditions as well. Um, and we want to get to, basically, we want to get to the mission of Jesus and the heart of Jesus. That's what we're after. But there are things that, sacred cows, if you will, there are things, traditions that do get in the way, and we marry those things. Yeah. Because we like... We, we like a, the way I want church, right? We get sold into that. This is the way I grew up doing church, so we ought to do church this way still right. or whatever, which goes back to, I would say, and Brandon, you alluded to it last episode, I think, at the very end. But I think sacred cow tradition number one is um, people want method over mission, and it should be mission over method. Yeah. How we conduct church, that should always change. Culture may dictate that. And I don't mean it in a, in, in a um, like we bow down to culture. I don't mean that. But we know like right now we live in a digital age. We ought to change our methods to meet in the digital world. Right. Yeah. Right? And that's okay. But the mission and the gospel message of Jesus will never change right. the way we do church. Right. But the little small operations on what we may do on a Sunday morning experience may change or yeah. whatever. And we have to be okay with that. We got to be married to Jesus and not the method of how we operate what we call our, our weekend experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in a sense, right, in, in light of COVID 19, kind of our, our method got kicked 
flipped upside <laughs> down. <laughs> they kicked the crap Still out tumbling. of it. <laughs> because, you know, because really, I mean, and even some of us, you know, pastors on staff, you know, leading up to this, you know, before COVID-19 and, and all of this, you know, we kind of railed against this. Oh, hey, well, what if we do a digital? Uh, no, we really want people here in person. We want, we want to connect in person. I mean, so even some of us right, kind of railed against that. And now it's like, I oh, did. wait. I totally went with the flow. You were just all, you were all for it. <laughs> no, like, so our small groups, right? You know, we've dialogued about this. Of um, There was someone who approached me last fall that was asking about an online life group to me. This, this person was a, a new mom. Uh, it was hard to travel, to find a babysitter, all those different things. But they still desired to be in community uh, sort of thing. And I basically... I don't want to say blew the person off, but I didn't give them the attention that I should have. And say, oh, we want to meet together sort of thing. So we're not going to do online. And then what did we do as soon as the COVID-19 hit? <laughs> we hurry up and we launch online life groups. Sort Everything of thing. is online now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that was like, to me, life groups in person was a sacred cow for me. Yeah. I, I thought that's how you had to do small groups to do life groups. It's like, no, you, you can do them on a Zoom or a, mm -hmm. uh, some sort of video thing. Uh, and so, like, that wrecks me, uh, mm -hmm. just how to do life groups. So, But that's a great example of where you married a method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got we to gotta be able to, if you will, I, hate, I don't want to use the word divorce, but we have to get into a different mindset of if this way the method is going to reach more people, develop people, people in a deeper walk with Jesus and it's going to reach more people, by golly, we got to do it. Yeah. Which correlates to a sacred cow back in the late 90s, early 2000s. We've heard it. The worship war. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was, I was going to go there. You are speaking. <laughs> right. You're yeah. getting rid of hymnals? Like yeah. this is how we do church. It is not yeah. how we do church. Yeah. We may go back to hymnals someday. Who knows what the future holds? But we got to be in a willing spirit to say, if that's where the spirit's leading, that's where we're going to go. Right. Don't marry the hymnal. Marry him who created you, the Whoa, Heavenly Father, yeah. and not marry. I'm getting fired up now. <laughs> uh, don't marry that stuff. Marry the mission of Jesus Christ. And right. if that means, you know, we don't run Sunday school anymore. Sunday school's changed, right? right? I mean, that used to be a huge thing. That doesn't happen anymore. And that's fine. And I think there's seasons for things. Within the church world, there's right. seasons for it. And that was a season of where, for a lot of churches, the hymnal was it. And it literally caused, which I think actually, to be honest, I think it broke Jesus' heart. It caused churches to be, some shut down over the worship war, some split over the worship, and some had mass exodus because they married certain things in the worship. And a church changed direction, but the church did not change who Jesus Christ was. Right. And so we got to be very careful there of understanding what have I fallen in love with? Have I fallen in love with him above everything? Hmm. And I think that's key. What, JB, well, we get it's your... amazing, Brian, that you're using marriage language because the very book that, that Josh was teaching on yesterday in Galatians, Paul says that. Hmm. He, he uses that, that language. He says... You have to be divorced from the one to be married to the other. Mm. And that, that's, that's a really challenging thing. And then, then it even says, you know, you, you can't go back even to the original one. You know, there's old covenant or first, first covenant laws that said, if you divorced a woman, you couldn't remarry her. You know, there's, there's a lot of symbols there that show us that um, the things that we're married to, they matter to God. And, and the real marriage is with Jesus. Yep. We are his bride. Yep. You know, yep. um, yeah. That's got to be the, the most important thing. Yeah. So I'd, I'd be curious, JB, I mean, because for those of you that don't know, JB is our, our worship pastor, among other hats that he wears here. Um, do you want to speak at all into the whole worship wars? I, mean, I, I yeah. remember. I remember... <laughs> My experience, but as a, as a worship leader, and you've been right. leading worship for a long time now, what was yeah. your experience with the worship wars? You know, it, it's interesting because I grew up in a church. It was a hippie church. 
uh, that we always had rock and roll music. Like right. We always had contemporary music <laughs> my whole life. A hippie church. When I came, when I came to, to Radiant Life, I would ask Ryan, uh, are the, uh, will the Wesleyans allow this? I, he would tell you, I would kept saying this, Is this, does this fly with Wesleyan people? I, I don't really know uh, because it was so new to me. So like, there's a lot of hymns I don't know, but as I learn them, uh, for me, it, it's, there's so much beauty and richness and, and doctrine and mm-hmm. theology in, in those that I think, I'm going to poke somebody here, some of the modern music can miss sometimes. And we, we've mm-hmm. talked about this on the worship team. If I have a song that I could sing to God or I could sing to my wife and you wouldn't know the difference, ooh, yeah. the God is my girlfriend kind of thing. Yeah, about. at the same time, some of those, again, if, if you look at the marriage language right, right. in Scripture, I mean, there's, sure. there's some of that, it's understandable, but yeah. some of it is pretty... Pretty fluffy. Yeah. You know, oh, so there about? definitely is. But sure. on the same topic of worship and the worship war that happened, can I'll say this. There, JB, you're absolutely right. There is beauty and deep doctrine in hymns. There is. Yeah. On the flip side, with some of the contemporary songs, there is beauty and deep doctrine mm-hmm. in some of these wor- new worship yes. songs as well. Yeah. Right. And I think yeah. we, we just got to understand that there's a great balance between the two. Yeah. yeah, there is some really fluffy contemporary worship songs like that's more focused on the you. Worship's about God, right? Amen. Describing worth right. to him. Right. A lot of the contemporary stuff is all about you type stuff. And that stuff is, I don't want to sing that stuff. I want to sing, I want to ascribe worth to God. I want to be reminded and come in and just worship and praise my heavenly Father, and so I think we have to. Whether you're you're listening to and watching, and you're like, man, I wish the churches um, across the globe would go back to hymns. Um, have an open mind because there's there is some deep theology and beauty in some of these contemporary songs as well. And also, just because a song is written in the form of a hymn does not mean that it is theologically sound. Right. <laughs> don't That's don't That's base right. your theology on on any. One word or any one group's music. Right. And hymns, by the way, have a bar. What's the whole Amazing bar? Grace? It was it's a bar all, tune. It's all a bar tune. It was actually a bar tune. That I did not know they'd that. They'd sing around. Yeah. yeah. Are you a lot serious? of your yes. hymns are bar huh. tunes. Yes. And I did not of, know that. But here's what I think we married the book, right? Yeah. We married the hymn book. Right. And we don't even realize that a lot of these were. Bar tone, bar him, bar whatever. But we just fell in love with that blue or red or brown book that was in my pew, in the back of my pew. We fell in love with that thing. Mm-hmm. Fall in love with Jesus. Please hear me. Fall in love with Jesus above everything. Don't even fall in love with a pastor or a church. Fall in love with Jesus. Come on. Yeah. So it's not that it's not that you can't connect and worship God through hymns. It's not that you can't connect with God and worship him through more modern music. Yeah. The idea is like those are not the only ways. Don't get so locked in. Well, no, everybody everywhere has to use hymns or has to use modern, you know, more contemporary worship songs. Again, that's a lot of that is matter of preference. Josh, Josh I'll go a little, uh, one step further. This might this might offend people, but coming from the legalism buckle, side, buckle up, ladies. Yeah, and gentlemen. <laughs> coming from the legalism side, which is a sacred cow, which is this idea of obedience as a way to ex- be accepted by God, there are some secular songs, songs that were written by people who don't even believe in Jesus that I hear the voice of God in. I do as a believer and a follower of, of Christ. I know they were never intended to speak about God, but I hear it. Yeah. Like I hear God's voice in that. Yeah. Uh, and I know some traditional people, oh, you can't listen to secular music and there's no way that, that God could be a part of that. Actually, I think that that person that wrote that song was created in God's image. Yeah. And maybe in that moment, yep. yeah. they yes. God was speaking yeah. through them, even though they yeah. didn't even believe. God yeah. can use unbelievers. Absolutely. He right? used a he donkey. Doesn't, <laughs> yeah. Which is not to say that if you're a follower of Jesus, you are in any way, shape, or we're, no. not, we're not calling you no. a donkey. I just want no. I just want to clarify. Did it come that. out like that? I'm just, okay. No, I just want fine. to make sure that. No. <laughs> I am not in play. Yeah. But if he can use a donkey, I mean, he can yeah. use a song. Yes. Written by someone who's not in relationship with God yet. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I love that yet. Because whether you're following Jesus now or not, you were still created in the image of God. Oh, and yes. our God is yes. a creator. Yes. So the idea that, that, that all human life, that we are capable of creating something that reflects that image of God, I think is 
Absolutely. Art, you know, we can see a painting or, or, or something, a piece of art that someone's created and be moved by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. See God do uh, something through that. Every time I come into this worship center and the light is shining just through uh, the stained glass in our building, it, it moves me. Some architect, some person, some thinker decided to put these two beautiful pieces in, in this building. And God's in that. He's in that, that structure. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Which I think a, a, another maybe tradition or sacred cow, whatever you want to call it, that the church has struggled with is, is this idea of the sanctuary. Mm. That this is the only place where God's presence the building. dwells. Right. The building. Mm. Right. And it's not. Right. Because when Jesus died on that cross, that veil in the Holy of Holies was torn. The presence of God goes everywhere. And yes. now we're the temple. Right. The presence of God is with us. It's not just in the building on Sunday morning. Right. It's everywhere. Right. And, and I do think specifically the sanctuary, or here at Regan Life we call it the worship center. Maybe you've been to churches and they call it the auditorium or the big room with all the chairs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's specifically there. I remember as a teenager, one of the the pastors, well, I had, I had two different encounters with, with two different pastors. One of them was one of my pastors. One was a pastor at a friend's church. Uh, and the, like, our pastor at the church I was at as a teenager, like he would not allow anybody to have food in in the yeah. worship center or in the sanctuary because you know like apparently that's right. bad <laughs> you know yeah. or you know or whatever. Sacred. And yeah. then and, and then uh, uh, at one of my buddy's churches, I remember walking in. It was like a Wednesday night or something, and I walked into the the sanctuary, the worship center, to go meet up with my buddy, and I had a hat on. And oh. He like he yelled across the room. I mean, like, yeah. like I mean, yeah, he, he doesn't know me time. from Adam really. And like, and he yells across the room, "You gotta take off your hat. This is like the sanctuary." I'm like, oh my, oh my God. appearance is a sacred cow. <laughs> it totally is. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And and I'll go back. And like one of the reasons where I, I, I wear jeans and t-shirts sometimes because I want everyone. I think the heart of Jesus is is to meet people where they're at. Amen. Right, and I want to meet people where they're at. I want to be on stage on a Sunday morning, up on the platform or whatever, and, and an average person can look there and say, "I can relate." Yeah. That doesn't mean I can't look nice here and there or whatever, right? But I just want to be relatable. You still have your marrying and bearing suit, right? I do. <laughs> well, I, you're a real I, own, I, I own one <laughs> suit. You're a real pastor, it's the marry and bury suit. That's right. So, Ryan, on that note, I, I don't always lead worship from the front of the stage, as you know. Sometimes I'll lead back here. I'll play second guitar and. Uh, a few months ago, we had someone that came to our church, Radiant Life, never been here before, super nervous. They were afraid to be here. And as you can see on camera, for those of you that are, that are watching, I have full sleeve tattoos. So I come out and I stand on there and this person shared with another member in our church. He said, when the dude came out and he had tattoos, all I thought, I'll be okay. <laughs> if they let that dude on stage. Yeah. yeah. Then then I'll I'll be yeah. accepted here. So it is yeah. about making a, a culture and an environment and an atmosphere where the love of Jesus can connect with people yeah. right where they are, no matter where they are in life. Yeah. Um yeah, appearance the, is a sacred cow. It is, because yeah. I, I, I've been at churches where you have to dress up. Like mm -hmm. like dressing down casual would be wearing khakis with a polo. <laughs> yeah. Sort of thing. Um, You're just on, only for potlucks, right? Would, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you dare be that casual? Yeah. You, otherwise, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's like, you know, what if a person can't afford to have khakis right. or a polo? Right. Sort of yeah. thing. Are they going to feel welcomed at the church? Because yeah. um, my, my wife, she she loves it when I dress up, but I don't typically dress up. I'm I'm very casual, sort of thing, and you know, like. Easter, that's always a big service. And like some people, they'll have uh, their, their Easter suits. Uh, some of the ladies have Easter dresses and hats and get all super fancy. But what about that one person who's like, ah, oh, I'm going to go check out this church thing. And they see everybody right. all dressed up. Oh, I can't fit in here. It's going to be hard to connect with Jesus in that way. And I love how we break down those barriers and we do show some ink yeah. uh, sort of thing. But yeah, I've, I've been at the churches where you... You, you have to have your Sunday pants uh, sort of thing. So, 
Go Which ahead. makes you wonder, like Monday through Saturday, right? It was always like you got to get, you got. Where's my church clothes? We call them church clothes. <laughs> Sunday, best. Sunday, Sunday best. best. Sunday best. So what am I giving God Monday through Saturday? Oh, Leftovers? Oh, oh, dang! <laughs> I'm telling you, man. God, God looks at the heart, not the outward so, uh, appearance. So there's there's another big one you just hit on, Sunday yeah. or Sabbath, right? A sacred cow, one day being esteemed or or thought of higher than any other day. Mm-hmm. That's that's a big one there, right yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. Or that in some ways, like, hey, if I show up to church on Sunday, like I'm good for the rest of the week. I can do whatever mm-hmm. I you know yeah. want to <laughs> because hey, I, I did church, like I even dressed up for it, like we're good to go. And yeah. I lived the I lived a lot of my life like that. Yeah. That kind of thinking is like God, God's this giant slot machine in the sky. <laughs> and if we just yeah. put a couple quarters, pull yeah. the lever, Sunday attendance, midweek Bible study, I'm good. That's right. All, all the uh, <laughs> yeah. all little things just lined up right yep. there. Three cherries. Right. <laughs> well, I noticed even like some of you, you guys wear hats. And as the lead pastor, I'm okay with hats. Um, I, I've never worn a hat on Sunday. I probably won't. But I'm okay with yeah. you guys wearing hats. Um one thing that I do, for instance, uh, if I do wear a hat and, and I pray, I don't take my hat off. Um, I don't. And I think that's a sacred thing, too, where people, going back to the appearance talk, like, oh, you better take your hat off, you're praying. What? what? <laughs> where is that coming from? Why do I have to take this off to pray? God knows my well, heart. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I, 80% of my prayers are with my eyes open. Yes, sir. They are. I don't I, close my eyes. I got too much ADD. I have to close my eyes. So I'll get Greg, distracted. There's a, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I don't have it in the text right in front of me here. But like, you know, you, you see you see this uh, narrative of uh, a, a sinner, and he goes and prays, and then you've got kind of the religious person, right? And, and does the religious the religious guys all kind of like oh yeah hey I'm awesome glad thanks for not making me like this but the other guy does it say he looks it like says he, he beats, beats his, his chest. chest I mean this is like this is not like a God help me I'm a sinner now I lay me down to sleep I pray. <laughs> no. it's just a scary prayer for a kid right. yeah. if you think I just think it. of Metallica I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I understand man yeah yeah <laughs> Although maybe if you're looking, you know, because I grew up like you did, like well, or what you referenced, like yeah. I wasn't allowed to listen to. You know, oh, dude, I got music. Beastie Boys, Guns N' Roses tapes <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> yeah, my mom took those and pulled the pulled the. Oh wow! Oh, she, yeah. was, she was not listening. Bro, to she it. was serious. <laughs> but then we would uh, we weren't supposed to. But like you'd sit and listen yeah. to the radio station for yes. hours just to catch a Metallica song. That's right. And hit record. <laughs> That's right. You know, which is, you know probably record on that tape. I'm sorry, Lo- Lars Ulrich. Like yes, I know he was. Yes, not, <laughs> Oh, what was it, Napster? Something. Sorry, that's way off. We're <laughs> way off track. Uh, so, any other sacred cows you guys can think of? Like, just again, traditions that we sometimes let get in the way. Again, Ryan, talk, when we were talking worship wars, there have been churches that have split yeah, yeah. because no, hey, we should sing hymns. No, we should have you know like a band with drums because that's what people are listening to this, these days. Um, you know, you've had churches that split, and I think that breaks God's heart. Yeah. Jesus prayed in John 17, and, and one of his things when he prays for all believers is that we would be united, yeah. right? And But yet we divide yeah. over, you know, the, the style of music or the color of the carpet. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I mean... The color of the carpet, the color on walls, yeah. what paint we chose. Not we, but the church. Yeah, um, yeah there's been churches divided over that. What about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, well, what about different uh, ministries? How, how do you mean? Like uh, a, little bit. a churchy word would be like an outreach ministry. What it, you know, it's the church has always done this thing. Oh, mm. yeah. That's not how we did it before. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, maybe when it started, like, it had great intent mm-hmm. and heart behind it. But over time, it wasn't really seeking lost people and it definitely wasn't making disciples out of this ministry which jesus has called us to do like what about those like i you know my memory bank is filled with maybe some ministry i mean you kind of alluded to like sunday school classes like that's a ministry so to speak but like it's a good thing but like we're people like we're lost people coming to a sunday school class and coming into relationship with god 
sort of thing. Maybe there was some discipleship there. Uh, I, like, I don't want to paint this negative, like I, I'm against Sunday school. Like, I'm not. But what about other ministries? Like, in the name of reaching people who are far from God, but it never actually reached them. Yeah. Well, Ryan I, has always done that, a good job of, of encouraging us to think about groups and ministries not being insular. When I say that, meaning they're about us mm-hmm. and about yeah, yeah. church people and church yeah, yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. But he, he's always led us well in showing us that, hey, how will, how will the average person come into this group and either encounter Jesus or be encouraged in their walk already? Mm-hmm. That's right. helped me shake out a lot mm-hmm. of things because I come from a church background. I'm born and raised, and I think about it you know, from a church mm-hmm. perspective with, with horse blinders on yeah. versus how, how would the average person encounter Jesus through this ministry? Yeah. yeah. And I think, too, that you got to go into whether you're starting a ministry or a ministry is already existing. There's seasons. Mm. There's seasons for certain yeah. things to happen. And maybe perhaps that ministry for that season, it did its thing. Mm. And now the Lord's opening another door and saying, hey, that's not as effective. It was effective for that season. Put it on the shelf. And now I'm going to go do this thing now. And that's where I think the hang-up comes for, for some of um Followers of Jesus for Christians is a sense that we got we marry the ministry, right? We we do. And it hurts now when the pastor or the church makes a change in that ministry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just you gotta hold things loosely as far as those ministries. Hold them loosely, but hold Jesus tightly. Hmm. And it's about him, not this ministry. This ministry may have, good bombs. may have a season. Oh. But I yeah, I was just gonna drop another bomb, but I forgot it now. But I totally <laughs> you derailed me. <clears throat> you bombed bomb. me on my That's bomb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Well, because the last episode, right? We we talked about being in step with the Spirit. I think that's the key. I think that's the theme that I'm seeing between these two episodes. Is we need to be in step with the Spirit and the Spirit's guiding, mm. right? Whether it's the decisions that we make, good. Uh, the traditions that we hold on to. The tradition should be we should be in step with the Spirit. Yeah, it's good. Um, no, it's good yeah. because if we're in step with the Spirit, and the Spirit now is like, hey, church in America, you're going to run church on Thursday nights now. What? Oh, <laughs> Almost we made that Sunday. We married the Sunday <laughs> method, didn't we? Yeah. We married exactly. that Sunday morning method. And in the middle of COVID, that's all getting oh, flipped. Oh, man, right? yeah. And we just got to stay in step with the Spirit. Yeah. Where are you going? Hey, if it is to change the method of how we're doing it, but Holy Spirit, you're leading us, then we want to stay in step. Right. If it means it, this ministry is done, Holy Spirit, I'm going to be fine with that because that's in step with you. Absolutely. And, and if we're in step with the Spirit, I would think we're in the will of God. Yeah. Right? It, you know, I talked about this uh, at the at 8 this morning that I recorded of, you know, Jesus praying in the garden, right? Like he wanted the cup to pass. He did not want to go through what he did, but yet your will be done, Dad. Yeah. (laughs) It's like that should be our attitude each and every day, every decision that we make is, hey, Dad, what what is your will for me today in this moment? And the decisions that I'm going to make, and would you fill me with your Holy Spirit and guide me in those directions? Whether it's the the clothes that we wear on a Sunday or the color of the carpet, songs we sing, the songs that we sing, yeah. absolutely. Can I can I begin to land this plane with this quick story, and then Josh, you can. Um, sure. First of all, for those of you that are listening, watching, or whatever, like, and you've gone through some of this hard stuff, hear our heart behind all this. We love you. I know a lot of this is hard to work through, but I think it's awesome to have this kind of discussion and dialogue. But I want to say this. I was really encouraged. Like here at Radiant Life, I'll be here five years this summer. It'll be five years. And um, ask anyone who's been here all five years. We've, we've done a lot of changes. We've had a lot, a ton of growth. Um, bless God for that. And we've had changes, but we've seen God faithful through it. And before um, this uh, woman passed away, I think, Josh, you were with us. You were with me, maybe in the hospital visit. And this person uh, made a comment. I'm not going to get it word for word, but the the person before they passed away made the comment of they were wrestling with God with some of the direction of us as a church and what was happening and the different things, but they saw what God was doing in people's lives, and they were okay with it. 
they understood, even though for them personally, it's not what I would desire, my preference for church, if you will, but I see what the Lord is doing yeah. and I'm going to rest because I see that's his will. Yeah. And that was super encouraging. And that's where I love us coming in with an open heart and saying, hey, if the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep in step, as you said, Brandon, I'm going to keep in step with the Spirit. And if the Spirit's going that way, even though my preferences might veer <laughs> off to the right, but the Holy Spirit's going right. to the left, I want to go where Holy Spirit's going. Right. Yeah, because really, it's not that your personal preferences are bad, right? I mean, yeah. you prefer him. That's good to affirm. There's nothing that. wrong with that. Right? right, inconsequential. They're meaningful. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, yep. and, and, but it's looking at the end of the day, like if you're part of a church body, right, and, and you kind of have to say, well, hey, my personal preference is this, but like you guys have been talking about, like what is Holy Spirit doing here, and what does he want me to do here? Right, and then it's then it's following the spirit's leading. Just like this gal, oh, she was super sweet. You're talking about Joan, right? I, okay, name drop. Yes. <laughs> hey, she's. We didn't use her last name. She's, oh, okay. And yes, she's, she she's, was so sweet. She passed away. So it's, before it's not we knew she was part of the church for a long time. Right. It was it was honestly one of the most encouraging things I've ever heard as a pastor. Yeah. Was what she said on. We didn't know at the time was her deathbed, but yeah. what she shared was like wow. Mm-hmm. Like it was affirming too, knowing that we are going where God wants us to go as a church too. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, I can say too, just piggybacking on that, you know that coming from a different church background to, to the Wesleyan church was, was different for me. Mm-hmm. And, and the scripture that God spoke to me when, I, when we came out of the other church and came here was Luke 7.35, wisdom is justified by her children. The proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. The proof is in the fruit. Like mm-hmm. if I look at a tree and it's lush and full of apples, that's a good tree. Mm. And all I've seen here at Radiant Life is the good fruit of God's kingdom. I mean, and that's what Joan saw. 180 yeah. people when I saw. got here, four and a half, 200 people to almost, what is it, close to 900 people almost and 900. so many salvations. Yeah. I can't even see the chalk wall right now. Yeah. But, but the, the, it's proven. God's proving that, that he is guiding and directing us by his Holy Spirit. By the lives changed. That's yeah. that's what counts. That's what counts. Lives changed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if, if your church sings hymns and you have Sunday school and you all wear suits and people are coming into a relationship with Jesus Bless and they're being God. discipled and growing, yeah. we celebrate that. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Guess what? We were on the same team. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Remind, the, be reminded of that. We are on the same team. Yeah, right. We, we, we are. We kind of, we rock and roll and we wear hats and tattoos and, you know, we do that. And, again, just... Uh, if Holy Spirit's in it, it's gonna it's gonna be good. Yeah. So it's a good uh, episode. I'm glad you guys let me be a part yeah, of this. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> so no, hey, fun. thank you guys for hanging out with us for part two of episode five. This was uh, again, this wasn't even really planned. Uh, this was just kind of <laughs> we're just kind of going with uh, what came up in conversation with part one. Uh, thanks for joining us again. If your platform allows it, rate us, review, subscribe just to stay connected as we continue to crank out uh, these episodes for Radiant Reflections. Thanks for hanging out with us.